One meal a day sounds simple enough. Eat once. Fast for the other 23 hours. Yet beneath that simplicity lies a cascade of metabolic decisions. Your body must navigate every single hour you remain empty. What happens inside isn't just hunger or willpower. It's a complex physiological rearrangement of how energy moves, how cells prioritize repair, and how organs negotiate fuel under conditions of reduced intake in the absence of constant supply. Most people imagine fasting as deprivation. The body, however, interprets it differently. It reads the absence of food as information, a signal that triggers ancient pathways designed long before grocery stores existed. Within hours of your last bite, insulin begins its descent. This isn't a failure, it's a deliberate shift. Lower insulin opens access to stored fat, but that process unfolds more gradually than many assume. The body doesn't leap into fat burning. It transitions carefully, managing blood sugar with precision while deciding which reserves to tap first. The liver becomes the central player almost immediately. It holds glycogen, a backup supply of glucose that can sustain you for roughly 12 to 16 hours in many individuals, depending on activity and prior meals. During that window, your liver releases this stored sugar in controlled pulses, maintaining blood glucose within a narrow range. The brain, which relies primarily on glucose under typical conditions, depends heavily on this supply. So the liver rations it carefully, ensuring cognitive function remains stable even as the stomach stays silent. Around hour 10, something shifts. Glycogen reserves begin thinning. The body senses this decline and may begin producing ketones, small molecules derived from fat that can cross into the brain and serve as alternative fuel. This metabolic flexibility, the ability to switch from glucose to fat and back again, reflects a biological sophistication most people never consciously experience. Modern eating patterns, with their constant snacking and three-meal structure, rarely allow this transition to complete. OMAD encourages this shift to occur more frequently. Ketones aren't just fuel, they alter cellular signaling. Research suggests they may influence gene expression, reduce oxidative stress, and are associated with enhanced mental clarity once the adaptation phase passes. Early on, though, the shift feels rough. Hunger spikes, irritability surfaces. The brain, accustomed to regular glucose, protests the change. Ghrelin, the hormone responsible for hunger signals, rises sharply when meals are consolidated. Studies show people eating one meal per day often exhibit higher ghrelin levels than those eating three times daily. Yet paradoxically, many who persist report that hunger eventually quiets. The body adapts, the signal recalibrates. What remains less clear is whether this adaptation comes at a cost. Some research indicates that eating one meal per day, particularly in the evening, has been associated with elevated fasting blood sugar levels the following morning in certain populations. The body's response to insulin may become delayed, meaning glucose clearance slows. This suggests the timing of that single meal matters enormously. An evening meal may disrupt the natural rhythm of glucose regulation, leaving morning blood sugar higher than baseline despite no food intake overnight. The mechanism appears linked to circadian biology, the internal clock that governs hormone release, digestion, and cellular repair. This is where OMAD reveals its complexity. It's not merely about eating less frequently. It's about when that meal lands, what it contains, and how the body's internal systems interpret the pattern over time. Insulin sensitivity, the measure of how effectively cells respond to insulin, can improve for some individuals with extended fasting windows. Lower insulin levels throughout the day may allow fat cells to release stored energy more readily. Prolonged fasting also reduces the amount of insulin the pancreas must produce, which some researchers suggest may support long-term metabolic efficiency. But if the single meal is poorly timed or heavily processed, those benefits may erode. Blood pressure has been observed to rise in some cases. LDL cholesterol, the type associated with cardiovascular risk, sometimes increases on one meal per day, even as HDL, cholesterol, and triglycerides improve. The lipid profile becomes paradoxical, reflecting both protective and concerning changes simultaneously. The body composition effects follow a similar mixed pattern. Studies confirm that eating one meal per day is commonly associated with lower total body mass and reduced fat mass, 
particularly when the meal is consumed in the evening. Interestingly, this happens even when total calorie intake remains the same as a three-meal pattern. The extended fasting window appears to enhance fat oxidation during exercise, meaning the body burns a higher percentage of fat for fuel during physical activity. Aerobic capacity and strength generally remain unaffected in short-term observations, suggesting the metabolic shift doesn't impair performance. Yet the question of muscle preservation lingers. Protein synthesis, the process by which muscle tissue repairs and grows, depends on regular amino acid availability. Conventional wisdom holds that spreading protein intake across multiple meals throughout the day may support muscle protein synthesis. The body can only utilize a limited amount of protein at once for building muscle. Anything beyond that gets oxidized for energy or converted to other compounds. With OMAD, all daily protein arrives in a single bolus. Does this compromise muscle maintenance? Some studies suggest yes. Others show that athletes following time-restricted eating, even within an 8-hour window, maintain or even gain muscle mass when protein intake is sufficient and resistance training continues. The critical variables seem to be total protein quantity and train. Amo stimulus, not necessarily meal frequency. What complicates this further is the role of human growth hormone. Fasting triggers a rise in growth hormone levels, with some studies showing significant increases during extended fasting periods. Growth hormone helps preserve lean mass and mobilizes fat stores. It's one reason the body doesn't immediately cannibalize muscle during short-term fasting. Instead, it preferentially burns fat while protecting protein structures. This hormonal response may help explain why some individuals maintain muscle on OMAD while others experience loss. Genetic variation, training history, and the composition of that single meal all influence the outcome. Then there's autophagy, the cellular cleaning process that activates during prolonged fasting. Autophagy allows cells to break down damaged proteins, dysfunctional organelles, and accumulated waste, recycling components for energy or repair. Insulin suppresses autophagy. When insulin drops during the extended fast, autophagy may increase. This process has been linked to reduced disease risk, improved immune function, and potentially slower aging in research settings. Yet autophagy isn't instantaneous. It takes time to activate fully, and the depth of autophagy likely correlates with fasting duration. Whether OMAD provides enough time daily to meaningfully enhance autophagy remains under scientific investigation. But the transformation doesn't stop at metabolism or cellular cleanup. The way the body experiences a single daily meal reverberates through the digestive system, the brain, and even the microbiome in ways that are still being studied. The gut, usually stretched and active after each meal, now sits mostly empty. For most of the day, it contracts gently, signaling for food that doesn't arrive. Stomach acid still gets secreted intermittently, a reflexive pattern built over years of routine feeding. Without incoming food to buffer it, some people notice a hollow sensation or mild discomfort. The digestive tract, accustomed to a steady flow of nutrients, enters a kind of standby mode. Motility slows, the muscles lining the intestines contract less frequently. Blood flow to the digestive organs decreases as the body reallocates resources elsewhere. This isn't dysfunction, it's conservation. When digestion isn't needed, energy gets redirected to maintenance tasks that usually run in the background, crowded out by the constant metabolic demands of processing food. The gut lining, normally under continuous stress from digestion and absorption, gets a chance to repair itself. Cells in the intestinal wall regenerate more actively during fasting periods, according to observational data. Inflammatory markers in the gut may decrease. For individuals dealing with chronic digestive discomfort, this extended rest sometimes brings relief. Others, however, find the single large meal overwhelming. Eating a day's worth of calories in one sitting stretches the stomach beyond its comfortable capacity. Bloating, indigestion, and acid reflux become common complaints for some individuals. The digestive system, though resilient, wasn't designed to handle such concentrated nutrient loads. Enzymes and bile must be released in large quantities all at once. For some, this works fine. For others, it triggers discomfort that lingers for hours. Then there's the microbiome, the trillions of bacteria residing in the intestines. These microbes depend on regular nutrient delivery to thrive. 
When food arrives only once daily, microbial populations shift. Some species decline. Others become more prominent. Research suggests that fasting can be associated with increased microbial diversity, which generally correlates with metabolic health. A diverse microbiome handles a wider range of dietary inputs and produces beneficial metabolites like short-chain fatty acids. These compounds support gut barrier integrity and influence systemic inflammation. Yet the impact of OMAD on the microbiome isn't universally positive. If the single meal is nutritionally poor, lacking fiber or diverse plant compounds, microbial diversity may suffer. The gut ecosystem mirrors what you feed it. The brain undergoes its own transformation. During the fasting period, as glucose availability dwindles, the brain increasingly relies on ketones as an alternative fuel source. Some studies suggest ketones may support cognitive function, improving focus and mental clarity. Practitioners of OMAD often describe a sharpness that emerges after the initial adaptation period. Hunger pangs fade, mental fog clears, concentration deepens. This isn't purely subjective. Fasting triggers the production of Rexin A, a neurochemical that promotes wakefulness and alertness. It's an evolutionary remnant, a biochemical nudge that kept our ancestors sharp and motivated to find food when supplies ran low. But there's a threshold. Extended fasting without adequate nutrition can impair cognitive function. The brain needs not just energy but micronutrients, electrolytes, and consistent hydration. Sodium, potassium, and magnesium regulate electrical signals between neurons. When these minerals drop too low, concentration falters. Dizziness, irritability, and brain fog creep in. OMAD doesn't inherently cause this but it increases the risk if the single meal doesn't provide balanced nutrition and if hydration is neglected. The difference between mental clarity and mental fatigue on OMAD often hinges on those details. Hunger itself changes. In the beginning, ghrelin spikes predictably. The stomach expects food at certain times. When it doesn't arrive, ghrelin surges, creating intense cravings. Yet over days and weeks, this pattern shifts. The body adapts. Ghrelin secretion adjusts to the new eating schedule. Many people report that hunger diminishes significantly after the first week or two. The body stops expecting multiple meals. It recalibrates around one. Cortisol, the stress hormone, also responds. Research shows that OMAD can lower cortisol levels in some individuals. Lower cortisol generally indicates reduced physiological stress, yet this isn't universal. For some, the prolonged fasting period increases stress. Individual variation matters enormously here. The cardiovascular system finds itself navigating contradictory signals. Blood pressure often rises on OMAD in certain cases, particularly if the single meal is high in sodium or processed foods. Yet triglycerides tend to decrease. HDL cholesterol often increases. LDL cholesterol may also rise. The cardiovascular profile becomes mixed. Nutrient deficiencies present a quiet but significant risk. Packing all essential vitamins, minerals, fiber, protein, and healthy fats into one meal is challenging. Even with careful planning, gaps can emerge. Over months, subtle deficiencies accumulate. Energy declines. Immune function weakens. These effects develop slowly. The human body is capable of extraordinary adaptation. OMAD reveals this capacity. For some, this pattern unlocks benefits like improved fat metabolism, enhanced mental clarity, and simplified meal planning. For others, it brings digestive distress and metabolic strain. One meal per day isn't inherently good or bad. It's a metabolic experiment. The question isn't whether OMAD works. The question is whether it works for the specific body trying it, with its unique metabolism, stress response, and nutritional requirements. Some bodies adapt gracefully, others struggle. The body communicates this through energy levels, recovery capacity, and resilience over time.